welcome to week number two of the American Collegiate Esports League. We're going to get into these games just momentarily, but first off, let's introduce our casters for tonight. I'm going to be Katz doing your play-by-play, -play, and with me, I've got Flag. How are you doing tonight? You know, I can't complain. Everything's going well with me. Just ready to get champ select. First ban out, we hit Galio on Fresno State side. Yeah, Fresno State is going to take away the Galio of pick. We have seen resurge a little bit in the meta. I've got a good buddy. I think he's like rank 15 right now. He's been spamming a lot of Galio top, uh, even though it is more viable towards that middle lane. Building a bit of an AP mixed uh, health is, seems to be very, very strong on him, but taking it off the table, not allowing it. And that's going to be Ziggs and Anivia getting banned away All right. as well. So two mid laners out of the pool already. Um, seem to be attacking... Well, really, three mid lane champions. Can go four. It's just no mid lane champions are going to be left by the end of this uh, ban phase. Yeah, that is going to be the Vagar getting taken out as well. So denying some of that zone pressure, he can use with that event horizon as well as the primordial burst with a massive amount of burst damage. Final ban is actually going to be the Zac denying some of that pressure you can get uh, in the middle lane with that Zac ink pressure with the elastic slingshot can be absolutely massive as well as his ultimate pulling back carries into your team and absolutely allowing them to get demolished. That is going to be the Zaya ban as well being the final ban for University of Northern Colorado. Super easy new picks for Fresno State. State. That is going to be the first pick onto the Tom Kench. Uh, a pretty strong support currently right now. It could, of course, be taken top as a flex pick. Don't expect it there, Nigel. Thought Barry might pick it up. Uh, if you want to bring a Kogma or a Tristana with it as well, it's very, very strong, allowing them to get out of a lot of crowd control, but that's going to be Alistar getting locked in for Basil, okay? I like the Alistar pick against Tom Kinch. It really kind of stops him from doing anything fun because he has to walk up to get the Devourer off. So headbutting him, it's kind of kind of like messing with Leona. Actually, a pretty good team comp here. Our bot lane locked in here for the side of uh, University of Northern Colorado. That's going to be the Alistar and the Varus. With that chain of corruption, with the Alistar headbutt, if they're able to look at some lockdown onto the ADC and Tom Kench is just a little bit too far away, they can absolutely burst him here. And then on the other side, you have uh, Rek'Sai getting picked for the jungle and Malzahar for the mid lane. Yep, of course, Rek'Sai, a pick we've seen resurging, pick we've seen coming back with the knockup, of course, very, very strong punk jungle pathing, as well as good skirmish in the early game, and of course, can build straight into that tank and be the front line that your team needs. And then the Malzahar, of course, a very standard pick we've seen mid, a lot of lockdown and pick potential, as well as a decent amount of wave clear and damage, but of course, JG Matrix is going to pick up the Talia with a lot of roam pressure. It just, it's really disgusting to the pressure. Uh, Orm gets banned out on University of Northern Colorado's side. Um, let's see what they ban over on Fresno's side. That is going to be the Orn takeaway. Even after the nerf he did receive, they are still going to ban that away. Respecting that super easy noob. This can just be a noob and completely play Orn. Very easy champion to play. And that is going to be Nar getting taken away by Fresno State University. Waiting for the next band to come out. Last band of uh, Colorado's side. Yep. This will be the last band for Northern Colorado. We'll have to see what they do decide to ban, or they might lose a band. No, that's going to be the Tristana takeaway. Very, very strong AD carry with a lot of high damage. She's such a strong hyper carry um, right now. Especially with that Tom Kench to peel for her, that could have been disgusting, but it is going to get taken away when not too many strong, strong AD carries left open. Mm -hmm. And then the last ban on the other side of jungle they've taken away. Yeah, I completely agree. Completely agree with this Jarman ban, denying that lockdown. Both your carries are completely immobile. You have this Ferris and Talia with no escape abilities whatsoever. Of course, Talia has a wall, and if she can really get out, but the chances of using that for an escape is next to none. And that Jarvan Cataclysm can be absolutely brutal, but look at that. That's going to be the Urgot locked in for the top lane here got and the blind. Urgot again. Really like Urgot. Really fun kid. Um. 
hopefully hopefully he can have some better luck than when he picked him last week against Cho'Gath. He did first blood the Cho'Gath, if I remember correctly. Yeah, I know he killed him in lane before Cho'Gath killed him. It just kind of went downhill afterwards. Um... <laughs> Oh, that is a Tom Kench top, baby. Unbenching the Kench, unclogging the frog. They're going to release it here. Super Yusti Noob is picking it up, and that's going to be the Caitlyn Nami bottom lane for the side of Frozen Frozen State. That is not Fresno State University. <laughs> Don't worry, I did it too. Um, Len, now let's see what the last pick is over here for Colorado. Ooh, Sejuani getting to come very, very late in this rotation. A champion that kind of just completely went over my head thinking about the picks. And I'm very, very surprised. And I guess it went over their heads as well because this guy, this kid's picked up very, very late. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a really strong pick, too. I think Spire likes to play Sejuani a lot right now. Um, also, not not a bad ultimate for the team fight. I think Jarvin's would have been a lot better. Uh, so definitely a smart ban by Fresno State side. That would have just been way too much Wombo with Alistar, Varus, Cataclysm, Talia. Like, would have been no fun at all. Yeah, of course, um, Sejuani does have that innate takiness. So this is actually a very, very good comp to run team fights and pick potential with for the side of University of Northern Colorado. Uh, with that Sejuani frontline, with the Alistar, and then the various chain of corruption plus the ultimate can be absolutely brutal of course let's let's while we get in this three minute spectator late let's talk a little bit about these matchups of course let's look at the most hypey one this hypey top lane the tom gift kench versus ergot how are you feeling about this one um i like ergot a lot in this matchup i don't think tom kench's gray health counts as like health whenever you use uh, your ultimate with the ergot um so even if he has a giant shield, if Urgot starts reeling him in, he'll uh, he'll still successfully pull it off. Um, so it, it just kind of neg or negates his E entirely, depending on how Orbilus pulls or plays it. Um, looking at other matchups in the lanes, I I don't know about Ignite on Malzahar right now. Um, I'm gonna imagine that Italia's got the uh, spell book so that she can switch off a heal later. But we'll have to wait until the loading screen starts before I can clarify that for certain. And uh, bump up your mic real quick. I think you were a little bit quiet through OBS. Gotcha. All right, is that a little bit better? Hopefully it's a little bit better. We'll see again in a few seconds. Let's look at this jungle matchup. I'm going to give my input on this one. We have the Rek'Sai versus Sejuani. Rek'Sai, of course, has been coming more into popular, and Sejuani can get a little bit low in the jungle. So maybe if Rek'Sai is able to get some early invades in or look for some pressure and get some ganks down early. But overall, I think this jungle matchup is... will be back and forth. And then looking at the mid lane, we have that Malzahar versus Talia. This is just... This is going to be a heavy farm lane. There's not too much kill pressure from either side. Talia is going to hit up with that... Q is Maldahar will take his dot and continue to do what he will. It's going to be about the roam pressure for each side here. Even though it is big ignite being brought by Maldahar, I would expect an unsealed spellbook. And we'll um, see how that goes. And then looking at the bottom lane, we have this Caitlyn Nami versus this Ferris Alistar. I want to hear a little bit of input on that one. Uh, I, I don't think they're going to... I would think that Caitlyn and Nami want to play it safe. Um, unless they have Rek'Sai. The, the other thing that I was thinking of is Rek'Sai is going to be able to move faster than Sejuani. Um, it's sort of flip for the jungler in the mid lane on both sides, right? Mm -hmm. uh, Rek'Sai has more mobility. Talia has more mobility. So I guess it'll just depend on who have the better roams and ganks. But mm -hmm. I would... I guess I'll give the lane to Alistar and Varus just because they have the Ignite. They want to go more aggressive in the bottom lane early. Yeah, I definitely agree with this Alistar Varus going to be able to get ahead. Once this level 6 comes through for this Varus Alistar lane for Basil Guy and Deco, it's going to be absolutely brutal. A chain of corruption into an Alistar combo about how squishy Nigel Thoughtberry and Albino Sunblock are on that Caitlyn and Nami. It's going to be devastating to lane against a level 6 Varus. Because every time that they're going to be able to try and walk up, try and farm, try and do anything, that chain of the corruption range is, range rather, is pretty long. And they'll be able to walk up and just completely demolish them. 
Well, it depends on who he chains too, right? Because if Nami's reaction is quick enough, she'll be able to kind of stop Alistar with her tidal wave or her bubble if she times it right. Yeah, while that is true, I feel like picking up a chain of corruption onto Nami is the biggest one here. You don't even have to land it onto the Caitlyn. It can be absolutely and free to land it on Nami. So squishy, so little self peel for herself. Um, I mean, of course, you know, she has the bubble, she has the heal, and she has the tidal wave, but the reaction time, we'll have to see if Nigel Thought Perry has it. But looking at both these team comps, who do you want? Who do you think is going to pick up game one? Is it going to be Fresno State or is it going to be University of Northern Colorado? I'm going to have to go with the University of Northern Colorado because they picked the Aragot again, and I'm just a huge Aragot fan. I'm not going to lie. Uh, I just, just really enjoy it. So you, you've got no other reasons than that? No, like, it's just 110% bias on my part right there. Not going to lie. Um, I like Sejuani too. I, I, they do have the stronger bottom lane level one, two, and three with the ignite. I think. Um, it's really gonna have to come down to Nami's positioning. Like she's gonna have to stay out of tether range and like behind Kaylin. Yeah, no, I, I can agree with you there. Is but it will depend on how we get into it. I'm loaded in. Uh, you wanna pause at 15 seconds and sync up? Yeah. Once I, once I can actually see everything. Yeah, I'm still waiting on it as well. We uh, have this lovely spectator client that Riot gives us. They bless us with some of the best things, but frankly, they're just a small indie company. There's not much they can do. It's small really small indie company. Don't don't blame them, guys. Exactly. All right, I paused at fifteen. All right, you ready to go? Three, two, one. All right, we are getting into this game. Chat, Twitch chat, who do you guys think is going to win? Is it going to be Fresno State? Is it going to be University of Northern Colorado? Cheer on your teams. We're going to get into this one. As they are running down towards the red side. Ooh, they're getting ready to fight right off the bat. This could be a fight. Oh, no. See, there's nobody warded. It's going to oh. walk up. Paper Crusade is going to get caught, and he's going to go down really early. That's going to be a four-man bubble coming out of Nigel Thoughtberry, but it's not even going to matter because Paper Crusade just gets demolished. That was well, that was not. not a safe face check, and I'm not. Just hit your fast-forward button once, and we'll catch up. I'm at 103. Okay, yeah. That that's actually I think the best trick for us is just kind of jam the pause button or the plus button until we kind of sync up again because it's like an auto fifteen seconds. All right, we'll just do that whenever if we come out of sync. Just yeah, hit that fast forward button. Mm -hmm. and, uh, the be sure to put your scoreboard up. Oh yeah, sorry about that, chat. Both junglers are going to be starting towards their bottom side, so we could expect a little bit of fighting in the top lane 2v2 brawls uh, around three minutes after both junglers do opt to clear out their jungle. All right. Everything's a little more calm than it was in the first couple of seconds of this game. Just for a moment Here. longer. I want to see another face check. Another face check. I'm not too sure if both of these teams, after seeing that happen, are going to look for it. The bubble is not going to connect, and Deku is going to be able to put a little bit of trade damage down with the auto attacks. Another headshot going to connect. Well, so with the pulled over Peacemaker. Albino Sunblock going to do what he can on this Caitlyn. Try and poke him down. JG Matrix trading as well in the middle lane. His little, his little Tron Voidlings walking forward. Trying to that put on some harass on Talia. Yep, that is going to be level 2 for both bot laners as well. Deco should have a decent amount of damage with that W and E available. But of course, if a bubble does connect, come up with a trap, it can be absolutely brutal. Mm -hmm. And you have Sejuani's already finished her red. And Rek'Sai's about to finish her blue. Maybe got a little bit longer on that. Seems like she's off to a way slower start. She did actually opt for her wolf scamp while Rex I, or sorry, Sejuani just went straight Owen over to her red buff, and she is actually getting invaded. Spotted out on a ward. JG Matrix gonna back on off because she knows she is looking towards the middle lane. Pretty good ward, and they are gonna know it's warded, so 
Paper Crusade is going to be backing off. Uh, both junglers took all their camps except Krugs. Er... Yeah, Krugs and Gromp were left for both sides, but they both got Raptors and Wolves. The Spire backs on off and is opting towards that bottom side, while Paper Crusade is still top side of the map currently. Sad boy Randy continuing to push this wave in, trying to do what he can, farming on up. If we look at CS leads currently, it's pretty much even across the map. No massive leads, except in the bottom lane, as Caitlyn is up by about five. But Basil Guy is here in the bottom lane, and the Spire here is there as well. There's the combo, and might be able to do him. That flash is still available. He's yes. holding on to this very, very aggressively. Yes, there it is. Is the Ignite going to be able to burn down? Oh, yes, it will yes. be. Basil Guy picks up the kill. Albino Sunblock holding on to that flash very, very aggressively. They know the Spire's there. They know he can pick up that kill, and he's just not respecting it all, and goes down for it. I, I just don't think... what did, was Were they both level 3? So Alistair had a stun... And with uh, with his passive, just punched a stun, and then Sejuani Z came up as well. So it's not really. I don't think she had enough time to flash. Oh, she had plenty of time to flash, my <laughs> friend. Could have flashed the combo. Could have flashed the E as it still charges up. But that's a little bit of trading up in the top lane. And it's something to talk about another time. Super East Media was going to use that Devourer on Urga. Push Orbitals right back into the tower. He's actually going to take the tower shot. He's chasing him down. This Urga might go down. Oh, that's no. a flash for flash. And Super East Noob picks up the kill. The Kench has been unbenched. That's that's the problem with Tom Kench really early. is just him devouring you and getting a teammate. It does a lot of damage in early, the, the early levels, you know, his tower. Oh! The guy is here, but JG Matrix does not have nearly enough mana to do anything. He gets the knockout and he pushes him back. The Spire is there as well, but he's almost next to none HP. And he is just going to go on out. It's not as bad for Randy as it looked like it was going to turn out to be initially. Was was really frayed for him. Alistar has to back. Go get him a little bit of a buy. Paper Crusade is looking for JG Matrix in the middle lane, but he is just opting to back, playing it safe here. Alistair's already finished his Moby boots. He's ready to run around on the map. For what is a fairly safe lane for Deco, he can just stay back and far. There's not too much dive pressure from Nigel Fotberry and... Albino got Sunbox, so they can't just leave Alistar to continue to roam around and let Deco farm. Mm -hmm. And yeah, the solo experience for for Deco is going to be really good. That's going to get them to his ultimate faster, since you don't really need Alistair's ultimate to combo everything together. Definitely don't need that ultimate too much, but then of course you can look for the dive if the Spire does come down, or even a 2v2 dive. The ultimate from Alistar gives him so much resistances, and it just, it's insane. Mm-hmm. 90 caliber net, not going to connect, but is going to get him right out of that headbutt, pulverize range. Hmm. Sorry, continuing to fire, farm back and forth. The sad boy Randy is in the bottom lane, but they didn't actually see him down here. Daco or Basil guy could walk out a little bit too far, just like he is right now. He's going to be walking up. The silence is going to come through. That's a flash forward. That's going to be the nether grasp as well. He is might go down. That's a trap comboed up. So is that another net. Orbital's He's going to be able to get away with the heal, but it's not going to connect. That's going to be Orbital's teleporting. I mean, that's going to be one kill for JG. Matrix already comboing, and that's a double kill for JG. Matrix. Is oh, he going to be able to pick up a third? Now they're going to hand it over to Daco, but excellent collapse from University of Northern Colorado, and Absolutely. they're going to pick up three. They're going to pick up three and Dragon. Cloud Drake's going to be really good for Northern Colorado as well. They have a lot of tanks. A lot of people that will build a lot of HP. Yeah, from what looked like was going to be a pretty easy kill for the side of uh, Fresno State, was turned around by that teleport from Orbitals. Jungle Matrix roaming down with that Weaver's Wall. And the Spire just matching it, so that was just completely well done. Just by every Northern Colorado. Every Northern Colorado member decided to go bottom lane. It's really pretty. Did uh, Varus did not ult? He's got his ult now. Let's see if they try to do anything with that. It does um, hit level 6, the Chain of Corruption is available, and the Spire is hovering down towards that bottom lane. The Flash is not available for Iblano, Sunblock, or Nigel Thoughtberry either. I'm so, I'm so afraid for this blue side right now. 
they might get caught here. They're walking up very aggressively. It's the Hex Flash is getting oh. charged. The Chain of Corruption connects. He actually pushes them away. It's not even going to matter. He yes. doesn't connect either. <laughs> they go by to Sunblock. It doesn't matter. Nothing connects onto him. Deku misses his E. He misses his Q. Gets pushed away from the Sejuani. But in the end, picks up another kill. 3-0 and 3 on Varus. Another, another really good gank set up by Northern Colorado. Which is patient. There's the patience, and of course, there's the missteps from Albino, Sunblock, and Nigel Thought Theory. They have no idea where anyone is. They know that Dago's level 6. They know that the Hex Flash is available from Basil Guy, but they still opt to walk up and disrespect it. I was I was afraid it was going to be Nami that was going to hit by it, though. He, he held on to it long enough. Then he ended up going with Caitlyn for it. Clearing out some vision, trying to get control. University of Northern Colorado is completely in the lead at the moment with almost a 4k gold lead. Orbitalis is trying to do what he can into this Tom Kench. Staying alive, but is down. Almost over 20 CS. Uh, that, that is the thing. Tom Kench gets ahead of you, and then you never want to fight him again for a while. Because he'll beat you up. It's, it's just not nice. The extra health from his ultimate... Uh, to damage is not fun to play against. He's walking up with that acid, uh, or sorry, not was it, is it acid? It's, no, it's, it's corrosive acid charge. It. Or is it corrosive charge? Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. Corrosive charge. Caitlin's gonna try and clear out his ward, get some vision back in their oh, jungle. Super Easty Noob is shoving on the end, and he's continuing to farm. Time Lash not gonna connect, and Albino Sun Clock is clearing out the vision he can. I wonder what did you did you see what masteries uh, he took on Ergot this game? I did not. Yeah, it was that was one thing that I kind of slept on. Spire might be caught out here. There's gonna be the push away. Not gonna connect. The ultimate is available. There's the glacial prison. It connects. The heal is there, but those are the chain of corruption. Turning back around with another grass. That's gonna be one kill. It turns right back around. Deco with another. That's is Nigel Thop here. He's gonna go down too. Deco with another double kill. Two more kills going over the bears, but looking up at the top lane, there's the devour. He's looking for this 1v1. The tongue lash is available. Can the stun come through? Yes, it will. Super easy noob is on one. Can that be another solo kill? One auto. Frog has been unclogged, but it doesn't matter because the University of Colorado, the other side of the map, is completely m demolishing Fresno State or Fresno State University. So I do know that one of them, or he's taken press the attack on Tom Kinch, which is kind of scary. That press the attack gives you a lot of extra damage after you do proc it with the three auto attacks or abilities. Mm -hmm. It just kind of fits in really nice with Tom Kinch's kit. Um, right now you have Northern Colorado just securing the Rift Herald. You shouldn't have any problem doing this. University of Northern Colorado does pick up this Rift Herald. Should opt to drop it in the top lane. If they aren't able to pick up this tower, drop that final hour. Give them... Or outer tower give them so much more map pressure but this Varus is absolutely massive five zero and four seventy seventy three cs kind of mediocre not gonna lie to you but he is so big right now with that rage blade with his berserkers greaves and what should be opting towards i expect a qss very very early here into the nami bubble and malzahar nether grasp uh as well as you can qss the um effect of tom kench i believe his passive uh his stun on it, the... Yeah, you can QSS out of that. I don't think you can QSS out of Devour, though. But he's going to be okay. walking up to clear the ward. He's University of Northern Colorado does opt for this lane swap, sending Urgot down in the bottom lane, and the Deco and Bezel guy up to the top side, trying to, next, trying to get this next tower. Getting my troubles fixed up. Sorry about that, chat. I'll probably just have to speak up. The Spire is going to be walking in. That's going to be the Weaver's Wall. Paper Crusade might be in a bad situation here. Nigel Fopberry is there as well. The bubble is not going to connect, but that's a level 5. They're just going to have to back off, and Orbitals is getting pressure onto his bottom tower as well. Paul Deco and Basil Guy just do whatever they want to this top tower. He's going to get slapped around a few times. Tongue Lash not going to connect. Stupid Easty Noob is trying to clear out the waves. Well, he can. Deco's kiting away. Doing a little bit more damage. Ooh. 
That Q did not feel good. It didn't look like it felt good in any ways. Tongue Lash does do a little bit of damage here in the early game, as well as it will kind of scaling into the late, but it shouldn't matter. Super East Anubis 2, 0 and 0, not opting for any damage. Going for that full tank build, trying to clear the waves as he can. Basil Guy might get devoured here, the headbutt away to keep him alive for the time being. And pushes away from that tower while Deku continues to shove down. That tower is getting so, so low. Another E is going to connect, proc up his W passive. And just continuing to shove this wave in back and forth, back and forth. What's uh? What's your time stamp right now? I'm at 13, 13.45. Okay, we're at the same spot still. So just wanted to make sure. Blue buff going over to Malzahar. University of Northern Colorado is going to pick up this dragon as well. It's going to be another ocean going over to them. Gives them so much mana and HP regen. Usually the first isn't too noticeable, but once you pick up that second and even a third, as of course the next dragon is going to be a third ocean, actually. It can be absolutely brutal to play against versus the sieging comps. Yeah, well, and... Ugh. That's... I'm just so scared. Like, that's not going to be any fun to deal with. Is she going to... Yep, and there goes Rift Herald. That Rift Herald is going to get popped. Rift Herald is going to get popped up here in the top lane. They are going to try and clear out the waves. Do what they can, but Caitlyn is in the bottom lane. Orbitals does have his teleport available if he wants to look for him. What a great tectonic shove. It's not going to matter, though, nor will the tidal wave. So much poke damage going down, and that Rift Herald is going to get cleared out. They... I will say that Fresno State does have really good wave clear with spitting a minion back out and devour um, Malzahar, doing Malzahar things. Yep, Malzahar, of course, can continue to clear those minions, but Jungle Matrix they can continue to walk up, continue to siege. This chain of corruption is available, as well as JG Matrix applying that pressure with his uh, seismic shove can be absolutely brutal. And Paper Crusade is just walking up here in the bot lane, gonna eat a corrosive charge and back one off. Ergot also has his teleport. It's better that Rek'Sai's down there defending against him right now. We'll be able to knock him up. Uh, I do like that much better than having Caitlyn down there trying to push against Ergot. Let's have a little bit of dancing going up here. Super oh. Easty Noob is going to get engaged on here on the other side, but not enough damage coming out, not enough CC, rather. Sad Boy Randy going to take a little bit of damage as well, so continuing to try and shove up for this tower, but the wave clear coming out of the side of Fresno State is enough, but oh, Seismic Shove going to catch Sad Boy Randy, they're going to go on the other side, the Nether Grasp is going to get popped, but he's going to get finished very early in the fight. That's a two for zero so far, Deco's continuing to kite away, that's three kills, they're going to be chasing down Albino Sunblock, trying to get out, trying to escape the flash, and the Seismic oh. Shove going to get flashed away by Albino Sunblock, though he's going to be able to get out of that one for the time being. That is going to be the ace on the hole, getting blocked by Basil God. Yeah, not going to finish him off, but that is going to be a three for zero in favor of University of Northern Colorado. Just straight domination right now. Got 9,000 gold lead, four towers to none, two drakes. The list goes on. I don't think they're behind in any metric. They are very, very far ahead. Not a single tower has been picked up by Fresno State yet. That is going to be Abyssal Voyage going right on in, not bringing, actually bringing anyone in with them. Seismic so Shove going to push him away as well. Orbitals is here to match in the middle lane as well. Look, oh my goodness. And this game overall has just been absolutely insane. Somehow when I really highlight this game is Deco on this Varus. He has 12 out of the 13 kill participation. It's absolutely insane that he has this. Meanwhile, looking well, at it's, it's the 10 kill, kill participation and 9 coming from Alistar as well. Yeah, they're, they're all playing really well. You have you have 10, 10, 12, and 9 from everybody but uh, Orbitals. Yeah, playing very, very cohesively, uh, just as a unit and playing together. Mm -hmm. Just having really, really good picks. Just catching catching the bot lane off guard multiple times. Yeah, the only really losing lane, the only downside is, of course, Super Easty Noob on this Tom Kench, but 
you I really don't see him carrying this game. He is still that front line. He is not that damage dealer you want with the kills. You want with the gold. Two, one, and zero, and of course he's got that dead man's plate as the first item, Ninja Tabi's as well, but he's not gonna be able to do enough. I feel like his only pressure right now is if he stays in a side lane, if he opts to split push and try and make the best of the 1v1, but then again, Orbitals can just sit back and wave through with that corrosive charge with his W, and it's not gonna be nearly enough. They're gonna look for a pick on the Spire here. Or gonna knock him up here. That oh. bubble is gonna come through as well. There's the Devour bringing him back towards the team. But nobody nearby. There's the tidal wave. There's the waiver's wall. And he is going to get locked up on the other side. Basil guy. Daco is there. Not going to connect with the chain of corruption, though. Paper Crusade is going to get away from it. Continuing the kite away. The jungle Matrix picks up a one kill. That's going to be another okay. tra trap. Connects some orbitals. Trying to chase him down. He's going to flash forward. The corrosive charge does not connect. JG Matrix. Trying to chase him down. Albino Sunblock is one HP on the other side of it. Basil guy. I think he's looking for the kill. Okay. Yes, oh, he is. No, stopwatch. that's going to be the stopwatch. He's but, charging up the gunbow. Go. That's going to be the piercing arrow. Finishing him off. Daco 8 0 and 7 on this bears absolutely massive this game is looking to be over this lead for the university of Northern colorado is absolutely massive as they are just toying with their food i don't even know if they're playing with their food man they just seem to be wanting to get straight to dessert they're looking for game two and they're looking to end this quickly that's going to be that bottom tower getting taken 19 minutes and 30 seconds into this game so about 30 more seconds and that baron will spawn another ocean dragon coming up again in four seconds and this should be very very free for university of northern colorado to pick up red buff going to get handed over to Deco once again everybody this person's going to get choked oh. yep <laughs> oh poor god Just too big to stand on the plant being the only one left out, but it doesn't matter to him. He's backing, he's resetting for that top wave. Or actually, rather, Orbital should be bottom right now, and you'll send the rest of your team towards top, because he does have that teleport available. Yeah, he still hasn't had to teleport besides that first time when all five of them showed up bottom. Yeah, it's just a really dominating game. 3,000 more lead of a gold advantage. Of course, we really can't count them out yet. I've seen worse throws than this. But if University of Northern Colorado continues to play like they are, this game is not looking too good for Fresno State. Just a couple of vision pings and stuff like that around the Baron buff. I'm trying to get, I guess, vision cleared out. Paper Crusade does spot out Basil Guy and Nigel Thoughtberry could connect him with the bubble. That's going to be a double knockout into the chain CC. They're going to be looking to actually go onto him. The Nether Grasp is available, but so is the ultimate from Basil Guy on the other side of the fight. The rest of his team is there as well, and he's just able to walk out of it very, very freely. Just, his pink buff, he wanted it. He was going to take it no matter what. He wanted that 75 gold. Yep, Control Ward is going to get taken out, and it looks like that Rune and Hurricane is going to be the next item in progress for Deco with including that Blade of the Rune King pretty early here. And they should just be turning right on over towards this banner and send Orbital's bot lane as that split push pressure make some threat and play with vision around the Baron right now. Yeah, just a beta Baron situation. Don't want to and try and there do it. They kind are. Of That's exactly what mean. they're doing. The chain of corruption is available, but Sad Boy Randy goes in with the silence. Hits three. It's a really good way to check without having to get anybody in harm's way. And a little bit of poke, but you can tell it's just already negated from the uh, triple ocean drake. Triple ocean drake continuing to keep everyone full mana and full health. They are going to be turning yeah, Raydon over towards this Baron, clearing out some more vision, and Orbitals is doing exactly what we hoped he would. He's heading over towards the bottom lane and continuing to push. Pressure should be made. You should send JG Matrix to the middle lane right now. You don't need to be sending everyone together. You need to separate these waves and control your resources. But it looks like they are just trying to force up in the top lane. Another silence hit supposed to carries. Going to be going oh, in. Go. That's going to be the ultimate. Is going to connect the 
Uh, so will the Chain of Corruption going back in a lot of damage, but the Seismic Shove gets three. He's going in. That's a combo. That's two kills. Another double kill going over to Davio. Ten, zero, and eight on the other side of it. Jung, JG Matrix is just going to be running down. That's going to be a triple kill, but over in the bot lane, Super East Noob is going to be able to finish off Orbitals. Uh -huh. Will he be able to? That's going to be the Devour. There it goes. But what the interaction was of that? He's going to finish him off with the Fear Beyond Death, pulling him back in and getting a kill, and this could be the game going over to University of Northern Colorado Gold. I I don't think they can do anything. Yeah, that's that should be game. Nami's up? What, what are their timers? They might be able to defend. Yeah, that tower just dropped, actually, and of course, on the other side of it, orbitals, but that's gonna be the Weaver's Wall to actually completely block them off. They're not ending. They're gonna pick up another inhibitor, but with that Baron up, they might be able to do something. Deco is continuing to stay on this tower. They're walking one up and just deciding to play it back, play it safe, don't get too greedy, taking their two inhibitors, and they're probably gonna look for this Baron. They're gonna pressure mid first, see if they can get the tower. They are going to look for it. Chain of Corruption is not available. Actually, no ultimates available for University of Northern Colorado. But Paper Crusade is going to be going in. Going to get knock up on a one. The headbutt is going to get pushed away. University is going to be going in. Deco is kiting. He's left untouched in the back line. Look at him go. One, two, three. Auto attacks going over. 12, 0, and 9. That's a four-man bubble from Nigel Thornberry. Guess what? It's Ooh. not going to battle. There's the Glacial Prune. There's the Seismic Sub. Deco picks up another oh. one. That's going to be another double kill. 14 kills this game. Zero a death and nine assists they're looking for another kill jg matrix is trying to chase him down but there's the nether grass getting a little bit too greedy for that one said boy randy picks him up and this grew, could... grew a little too proud but at this moment i don't think it really matters oh, basil guy not connecting with the combo and pushing away from the spire they're trying to hold on to their life they're trying to do what they can but when you're three kills to 25 there's next to nothing you can do when you're down almost 15,000 gold at the end of the game they pick it up and that's going to be game number one going over to university in northern colorado so 25 kills 25 minutes <laughs>